So I'm often working with clients that are going to be appointed as the administrator or executor of a probate estate, and they have the unheralded duty of dealing with creditors of the estate. So questions arise on how long creditors have before collecting on a debt from an estate, and how do you deal with a reverse mortgage? Well, depending on the specific situation of the probate case, there may be no payments required to creditors. Hi, I'm Harold Powell, a local real estate agent serving Ventura and the surrounding communities. So if you like my videos and want to stay up to date on all things real estate for Ventura, I suggest hitting the like, subscribe, and bell icon to be notified of future content. Well, the first step in dealing with unpaid bills in probate is to gather every unpaid debt that may arise even before probate begins. And this will help you to better prepare for what needs to be done. So let's look at what kinds of debts that you should start collecting. The debts can include mortgages, invoices, personal loans such as car loans, credit cards, utilities, homeowner association fees, taxes, insurance such as homeowner's insurance or car insurance, and reoccurring monthly bills such as cell phones or perhaps internet. Now, it's important to ensure that the estate is not paying debts that isn't legally obligated to cover. And your probate attorney will let you know which payments should be put on hold. And in the event you get calls from your creditors, you can let them know that calls should be halted since you do not have the authority to make any payment arrangements until the court makes its ruling. So it's important to note that penalties, including interest and late fees, are paused and should not be valid during the probate process and while you're working on the estate of the deceased. Now, if you have any doubts about the validity of a claim, don't hesitate to seek legal advice from an experienced probate attorney. Now, depending on the specific situation of your probate case, there may be no payments required to creditors. Secondly, you'll also want to gather documentation related to the deceased assets, such as bank statements, property deeds, and investment accounts. As far as dealing with the creditors looking for payments, you need to make first them aware that the individual is deceased and as well as provide a copy of death certificate. So what can creditors do? Well, in the meantime, creditors can submit formal and informal claims against the estate of the deceased. In California, the creditors have up to four months from the notice of death to submit a formal written claim. Now, if the estate does not have a lot of liquid assets, the personal representative may have to sell other assets of the estate to raise money for the bills. Now, once you've validated the claims, it's time to prioritize them based on available assets and legal obligations. Again, here you'll lean on your trusted probate attorney for guidance. Some of the debts may take precedent over others, such as funeral expenses or taxes. The key is not to pay any debts that you do not have to. If you pay a low priority creditor, you may end up liable for the amount you should have not have paid. The goal of this process is to allocate assets in a way that satisfies the obligations while maximizing the remaining assets for distribution to beneficiaries. All right, so let's address how do you deal with a reverse mortgage in probate. Now, unlike the other mortgage debt that can be assumed by siblings, the typical reverse mortgage is not assumable and becomes due and payable. In most cases, the reverse mortgage holder will typically give the heirs anywhere from six months to as long as to maybe a year to satisfy the debt. Since the reverse mortgage company does track whether someone passes away, it's best to notify them up front Otherwise, they may start the foreclosure process prematurely since no one has told them what's going on with the property. So the question is, what are your options with a reverse mortgage? Well, there are typically four options for satisfying the reverse mortgage. Number one, sell the property and use the proceeds to pay off the mortgage and keep remaining any other equity. Number two, is to refinance the property and pay off the reverse mortgage balance. Number three is use the estate or personal funds to pay off the mortgage and keep the property. And number four 
in the event of the reverse mortgage loan being greater than the value of the property, you could sign a deed in lieu of foreclosure and give the property back to the bank and let them deal with it. But there is also another option that a lot of people are not aware of. There is a provision for heirs to purchase the property at 95% of the appraised value, not the mortgage, but the appraised value. So for example, if a property is appraised for 800,000, the loan balance is 875,000, the heirs would have the option to purchase the property for 760,000. Since the loan is insured by FHA, the losses are covered by the mortgage insurance. Now, if you found this video helpful, leave a comment or give it a like. Thanks.